Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Art of Passive Income podcast, I'm really excited because so many people love these podcasts when we talk to someone who's just like you. They've been through the Investor's Toolkit. They've been through flight school. And we want to just peel back the, is it the curtain or peel back the onion? Is it open the curtain? Onion. Yeah, peel back the onion and, and he learn more about their experience so that we can get some takeaways for ourselves and we can learn from them. So I am honored and, and privileged to welcome Greg Sipe, who has just graduated from flight school. Greg, when did you graduate? January. In January. So it yeah. hasn't been that long, about, about six months. So yeah. Greg, how, how did you find Land Geek and and uh, what made you want to go into land investing? So uh, my wife actually found uh, Land Geek. She found the program online. Um, I, I actually quit my job, my corporate job in January of last year. Wow, um, congrats. Had, thank you. Thank you. I'd had enough of, of being under the thumb of, the, of a big corporation um, and, and really uh, wanted to join my wife full time. She's, she's been in real estate investment uh, for about 10 years doing single family, multifamily investments. So I thought, well, this, this is a good time. I'm, I'm going to go join her. Um, and we were building our portfolio of, of single family homes last year when the interest rate hikes kind of, they, they killed the business case uh, for that, that business. Um, and, and land was just a perfect fit, right? Yeah. Something that we could do without the need of banks. Um, and, and I've always liked land. Um, we had, you know, we had two houses last year that we had to replace the air conditioners on, which wipes away, uh, your, your income for those houses. Right. Um, and you know, after, after playing amateur handyman for a year, I'm like, I, I'd like to try land for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you started with the toolkit. What was that like for you? Um, it, it was good, but I, I really, both the toolkit and, uh, flight school, um, they're, they're complimentary, but, but both, you know, you and Scott have different, uh, styles of, uh, uh, of the business, but, and, and teaching the concepts, but, um, it, it's just so much information in yeah. there. And, and I really love the way it's, it's like building blocks, you know, you go and you work on a specific piece of the business for a week and and it and it's done in such a way that you can actually you're actually building your business so that when you come out of it you've got you've got something you've got something going and it it's just it it was an amazing process yeah no flight school is is really done with you as opposed to toolkit which is uh do it yourself and uh i think that's a a great distinction so what has been your favorite deal to date um, so, I mean, the, the first deal is always everybody's most amazing deal. Right. But, um, right. I, so I didn't know what a deal of the week was. I thought deal of the week was, uh, when I get the email for, or I, I, we get the weekly blast on land mode. I thought that was the deal of the week. And I watched, um, the video series, Tate's video series, looking over Tate's shoulder and this light bulb went off, which should have gone off before on what a deal of the week is as, right. as he's going through that. So I did that on, on the Memorial day of um, Friday of Memorial day weekend. So I sent out my first offer to my mailing list that Friday. And I sold two properties, one in Florida and one in Colorado to a guy that had ghosted me about a month earlier. I had had a conversation with him on the phone he was going to get back with me on, on, on this land that I was trying to sell. And he, he just went dead. Wasn't responding. I sent him emails and sent him a couple of texts. I'm like, okay, well, I'm, he, he's done. But I had him on the list and he calls and he, he buys two properties that weekend. I'm like, this is amazing. Why have I not been doing this before? Yeah. It's, it's the, the, the list I think is the most important asset because that's the only thing that you own. Yeah, you know, Facebook could stop letting us advertise there. The lands 
might not like your last name. Who knows? Right. Yeah. It's or it's very competitive, maybe. And the the algorithms are changing all the time, but to be constantly emailing your list that deal of the week is is so powerful, so important. It's and it's that that's the only thing that you can control and 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 certainly own. So that's that's a fantastic first deal. Yeah. So what would you say was your your favorite hire so far? So that is an area that I have struggled with. Okay. Um, so we did pick up a VA uh, to start on the marketing side because that's an area I'm not strong in. Um, I did not have a Facebook presence. I was not on Facebook before this program. Yeah. Um, and I'm not on Facebook now because Facebook doesn't like me. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I did hire a VA for a while. Had the VA working my Facebook account, working my wife's Facebook account, helping us with the marketing, and I lost my Facebook account. Now, yeah. did you get, did you go to Facebook jail? I I got it, it was nuclear. I got blown up. Wow! I, I no longer have a Facebook account at all. Do you know what happened? Um, so I I did talk with Taria about that, um, and I had in my ad I had I had done the ad not my VA. Um, I referenced uh, the sounds of birds in the morning and fishing. Yeah, you can't ever mention and animals. And, and I didn't. I didn't know this. And I'm, you know, I get the little notice. Do you want to have it reviewed? Do you want to have it? Yes, review. Yes, right. review. But I wasn't cleaning up anything, um, and I just got shut down. And there's no one at Facebook you can contact to get your account back. I, I'm not aware of of any that that's. That's one of those things. At one point, I'm going to look for, but I, I'll tell you, I I um, made it a point to to continue with my marketing without Facebook, and I've sold, um, let's see, sold six properties through Landmoto leads. Okay, which which has been fantastic. I love Landmoto, and then I sold one to a neighbor mailing. So I've only I only sold one to Facebook before I got shut down. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really an important distinction that first of all, you don't want to have just one marketing channel. You need to have several marketing channels. Yeah. And I would say the best one is probably your email list and then land moto and the neighbors and they're, and they're constantly going to change depending on your property and the markets and, and just your marketing rhythm. But to always, to put all your marketing eggs in one basket is never a good idea. So that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, go ahead, Greg. Well, I was just gonna say it was it was really hard in February because I had just made my first two sales on Facebook. Yeah. One of those two sales dropped out, and then Facebook shut me down. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm done. I'm done. Um, so I think if there's if there's anything anybody can get out of this is th this business, you really have to persevere. Sure. You have to stick with it. Um, don't give up and just keep looking for different levers to pull, look at different ways to market um, because it you can be successful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, I can imagine that when you first went into flight school, you had some fears. Talk, talk about some of the fears going in. Um, well, I, I would say probably the biggest fear is when I got to the marketing section and especially yours, because you go into a lot on social media, mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not in social media. I'm, I'm on I have a LinkedIn presence, um, but that that's it. And, and so the the whole idea of um, blogging and doing videos and and just getting out there was very intimidating to me. Uh, yeah. But I'll, I'll tell you, I have come to love YouTube. Um, we've got our own YouTube channel and it, it you know, it's fun because that's something we can do ourselves. Our, I have my 14 year old daughter uh, record my wife and I and yeah. we put the little shorts out there uh, just just so people can can go on there and see, hey, we're real. Um, they can see videos of our of our properties. They can learn about the business. Um, it's really that's been really fun. Yeah, I think I think that's a really great point that you're bringing up is that. You don't have to hit every channel for your 
marketing as well as far as just social media even because i can imagine people are thinking oh i have to i have to blog and i have to email and i have to put up listings and i have to do videos really you should think about it as a pareto principle where can i spend 20% of my marketing time that's going to yield 80% of the results and it's going to be different for everyone so for some people, it's going to be their email list. For others, it's going to be Landmodo. For other people, it's going to be YouTube because they like making videos and maybe they have a, a teenage daughter like Greg that can help them and, and put that together. For other people, it might be Instagram. There's no right or wrong answer. You have to f- just play with it and see what resonates with you personally because we're all going to have our strengths in one area and our weaknesses in in another. Some people love to write. Okay. Well, maybe you you want to have a blog. Other people, if you think like me, think, okay, who can I get to to do all of it? But that's, but when you're first starting out, you just want to think about your strengths and, and play to your strengths and not get overwhelmed with all the other things. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. You definitely have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit and just try it. Um, that's, you know, if there's, if there's one thing I've learned, it's just, just try it. Um, because I, I wasn't excited about doing videos and talking to people in a video on YouTube. Um, but it, it, it works. It works for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you most excited about in the future in, in building your, your land business? How do you, how do you, how do you, what do you see your land business doing in the next, let's say one to three years and what difference um, do you see, think that it's going to make in your life? Oh, oh, it's going to, I mean, it's going to be huge. I mean, we, we, we got into this to fill a gap that we had in our cash flow and our income, right? And that, that couldn't be filled at the time through single family uh, rentals and, and not, not going back there. That's a good, that's a good base as well. We've got the base laid now for um, the land investments and it's just continuing to, to grow that. I do want to get to the point where I can get that, VA team working for me. I want to get a sales manager working uh, to help, uh, you know, chasing down leads. Um, just not there yet because I, I am focused, very focused on the cash flow aspect of, of the business and trying to trying to get the cash flow uh, where we need it, and then go to the next next step and and grow. And I think that's the um, kind of the challenging part. I know that as we add a team and get more people involved, we're going to take the step, that that next big step of, of growth. Right. Um, it's just getting over that hump of getting there because it's starting to get comfortable with, hey, we're, we're, we're cash flowing now. And, it, and it's just that next step. So. No, absolutely. And it's not like flipping on a switch. And, uh, you know, we, when we are working with our coaching clients and helping them scale, we want to get them to where it's, it's you know, their systems are predictable. And that we know our numbers, we know our metrics, we know if we have this many leads, we're going to get this many sales. And once we have some some good numbers, we're it's it's a predictable business. That's when you can really start throwing fuel on that fire and take it to the next level. And so uh, I think what you're doing is is great. You want to manage the growth uh, for sure, and you also want to delegate. You don't want to abdicate. So many people think, oh, I, I I just want to get this off my plate, have someone else do it when they don't have that depth of knowledge. And then it's the blind leading the blind. Even if you use a service like Land VA for you that are already trained in the land business, well, then you, you still don't know if you've got a, a good VA or not, even though they're they're trained. Yeah. So uh, yeah. That, I, I'm glad you, you brought that up for sure. So- what advice would you give somebody who's on the fence about either, you know, getting the land business? Maybe they're scared of competition. Is this thing going to get uh, saturated or they're worried about the investment and the training? What what advice would you give them? Um, to just do it. I, I mean, it's, it, it um, we started in Costilla County, which is one of the, one of the most competitive. It's the most, highly bought and traded, uh, County in Colorado. Um, and we've sold in Colorado. Um, so it's just, 
Um, don't be scared of the competition. Um, I think the, the competition is good because it does, it really does help you to sell the land, to be uh, marketing land that other people are, are looking at. Um, you know, and just get in, get in the, the training, um, take the steps uh, because you, it's going to help you build your business. And, and if you, if you're looking to build um, a, a passive income generating business, take the class because you're going to come out of it with something. You're, it's not like a training program where you go do the training and then you got to go do something at the end and you're, and you're kind of left to your own. You're, you're building it along the way um, so that you come out and you've got something. So it was really yeah. helpful. Fantastic. So Greg, your, your mentorship has been fantastic. This podcast, everyone loves these types of podcasts for sure. But now I'm going to put you on the spot. One more time. Oh, go ahead, Greg. No, you're putting me on the spot. Go ahead. One more time and ask you for your tip of the week, a oh. website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So it's a, a book called The Selling Formula by Brian Robinson. I uh, picked it up on Amazon. Um, and, and so Brian was a, a longtime salesman working for a, a major corporation, ended up going out on his own, but he's got uh, he, he was a top seller at his company. Uh, he's got some great advice in here about selling. Helped me to, to be able to better connect uh, with uh, my customers. And, and he had a tip in here that I used um, to help get a um, someone that I was trying to buy land from to respond, so, which was amazing because what, she, had what was responding. It? she had responded to uh, my offer letter. Yeah. Uh, and we'd had a conversation on the phone, exchanged some emails, and then she just went dead. Wasn't oh. responding to the phone, wasn't responding to emails. My my wife tried emailing her. I tried emailing her. And, and he had a, uh, a tip in here on um, just, it, it's like, uh, uh, it's kind of this, hey, is it dead kind of response? Like, like email them or respond to them with, is it dead? Because they don't want, they, they like the idea of uh, knowing that they still have the possibility for the sale out there and they don't want to lose that. And I did that. I'm like, Hey, this, this is it. This will be the last time I'll email you ever. I, I won't bother you again. And she responded right away because she didn't want to lose that, that potential, that potential sale that she was looking at. So. That's a great tip. That's a great book. Okay. What was the book again? Uh, the selling formula by Brian Robinson. The selling formula by Brian Robinson. And then my tip of the week is learn more about Greg. Check out his land. Go to Market Enterprises. Mark Enterprises. Oh, I'm sorry. Mark Enterprises. Dot spread. Dot name. Mark Enterprises. Dot spread. Dot name. And we'll have a link to it as well. Uh, Greg, are we good? We're good. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and remind you the only way that Greg's going to come back and continue talking to us about his journey is if you do three little favors. Follow rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of your review, support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich. If you want to become like Greg and start building your passive income quickly, safely, efficiently, and not have to deal with renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, thelandgeek.com forward slash training. And all of our training is guaranteed. You're going to make back that money 180 days or less. Just show us you did some work. So it ain't going to cost you nothing. All right, Greg, you want to do this together? Let's do this. Do it. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.